Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, well, uh, some people have sent me this article, and um, you know, I won't go through the details of it, but it's it's the headline is seventy percent of manga sales in Japan are now digital. Manga market accelerates digital shift after the pandemic. Um, and there's some graphs here that show kind of uh, from 1995 up, and kind of how print has evolved a little bit. And how things have shifted down from print and how in particular, you know, following the pandemic, there's been a spike of digital sales. Now, this is one of those cases, though, just for what it's worth, that when you look at the graph on the side, it's slightly misleading in terms of what is actually being said. Because it's not, uh, it, 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 you know, with all these things, what I hope that you all learn uh, through listening to this show, nothing else. I don't know why this is my, you know, you know the, the cross to die on. but. Um, it is that people use data in very misleading ways. And it's incredibly easy, particularly through charts and graphs, to make them in a way that is misleading. And they do that. You know, you saw it. You did see it with the Bud Light whole fiasco that went on there. You've seen it with Disney stock, both pro and con. You've seen it with Biden poll numbers. You've seen it with Trump poll numbers. People create these graphs basically to highlight a story. Did Bud Light lose money after that uh, controversy? Absolutely. Did the stock bounce back up? Yes, it did. InBev did. Oh, but wait a minute. Bud Light is uh, just part of InBev and other parts of this. I mean, look, you could you could spin it lots of different ways. And the simple answer is, yeah, that was a very stupid PR move that hurt them. And it was the very definition of an unforced error of something they didn't have to do, but they did it and it blew up in their face and caused them a lot of headaches and problems. Um, whether you are pro or against trans rights or any of that kind of stuff, from a pure, solid, black and white business perspective, it was a dumb move. Now, the problem is saying this was a dumb move and this cost business is often not enough for people. It is, um, it is, it has to be more. It has to be, ex you know, exaggerate. It has to be, no, no, it's not just that, uh, you know, there is an issue with, um, you know, with, with, it's not just that it's doing bad. It's actually doing catastrophically bad. The entire thing has jumped off a cliff. People are just diving out of buildings. And that's not true. It makes for a good news story to say things like that. But the reality is, you know, like all things, it moves like an iceberg. It, it, things move very, very slow. Uh, but anyway, that's how these things work. So, but, but what about this manga sales are going digital? Um, there's a couple little facts you should know about this article that is worth paying attention to. And keep in mind, I'm the guy with the channel who's talked repeatedly and endlessly about the fact that comic publishers in 2024 need a digital strategy. And if you don't have one, you're an idiot. And you are basically just, you know, veering towards your own extinction. It is stupid not to. Mostly because it's so effing easy to have a digital strategy that the fact that you don't have one is really an indictment of how lazy and or dumb you are. But for comic publishers, in many cases, that digital strategy was something they either outsourced or they hired incompetent morons to actually drive that business. And and sorry, I, it, it actually is that. That is not, the, the, the harsh words cannot be harsher. And I, I've heard from, you know, some various people at Marvel, including leaders at the time, um, around a guy like Pickon from Marvel, who was dumb as a rock. Now, I'm sure maybe he was a good person, uh, you know, bought beers at happy hour, Got everybody chicks at the strip joint. Whatever it happened to be, I don't know why. Maybe this guy, may, or maybe this guy's hated. I have no idea. But this person was a was an absolute awful at his job in regards to digital. He created licensing agreements that made no sense, helped nobody, didn't help the licensor, didn't help Marvel, and basically shot themselves in the foot for a decade or more because of these bad choices that he did. It is why you had the uh, consequence of Comixology and other services, which were also not very good. It got further gimped when they went to Amazon and you know everything else. By the way, some people uh, I was talking to somebody uh, the other night, and we were talking about how uh, you know a distillery is not doing well, and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it had this massive return rate on uh, on the book, um, but you know, it's from the the minds that brought you Comixology, and it's like, I, you know, I, and I don't want to pick at a scab, but I mean, you know, you know, what, 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 what are you, you going to do? Um, but anyway, um, you need a digital strategy badly. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, I'll never read digital, print forever. 
that's fine. Ride or die print. It's that's totally cool. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that in 2024, if you are a media company producing a good, you need a digital strategy. You need the thought process of how you're going to actually funnel off books and do work in a digital environment. You've got to think about that distribution path. If you don't, you're effed. Full stop. Okay. But here's why this headline and this article is not as interesting as you think. Okay. So number one, um, print has been slowly declining in Japan for quite some time and for a very boring and logical reason. Space. With the uh, popularity of manga and people reading manga and, and people collecting manga, these phone books that uh, Shueisha would put out, um, get they, they add up. Japan is not a collector culture like the U.S. is. It is uh, far more acclimated to reading the comics in these kind of cheaper zines and then uh, dumping them in the trash or reselling them or taking them to, what is it, Kodachu? Anyway, there's there's several bookstores where things can be resold, and they often are. And that's the culture of how a lot of stuff collected. It's not a collector culture. So the idea of losing print or print changing in Japan is very, very different. You know, if think about it in the US, if none of any if nobody cared about collecting comics, putting in boards and bags, preserving it, if nobody cared about that, or that was, you know, a, a tiny subgenre of weird, you know, shut ins in in uh, outskirts of Tokyo, whose entire apartment looks like a hoarder place and your know, subject, you know, is, is just one step away from a massive fire. Um, this is uh, this is kind of what Japan is like around a collector culture. So anyway. That's just kind of where we where that all sits. Um, you know, the reality is, if you don't need to collect anything, if there's no inherent value of keeping it, storing it, all the rest, then giving up on print is not a big deal, and it was never a big deal in the first place. And then point number two is digital. If you look at these graphs and you look at how it was, digital has been growing in Japan for quite a long time. The big barrier for digital, yeah, the big barrier for digital was really about connectivity. Because the use case of how people are reading comics and, and manga is uh, pretty clear. People are reading on the train. And so what was going on was people would, uh, basically, they would, you know, Japan is a commuter society. And so what goes on is that people will ride the train and they would read the manga on the train. And it's a hell of a lot easier to do that on a mobile phone than it is in a, you know, paper printed format. And it's completely different from the U.S. And so, you know, and, and to the point, you will see people in Japan on the train reading on a tiny ass phone screen, you know, very complex manga and zooming in and everything else because the convenience was so much higher. And so the barrier was, you know, network, quite frankly, if, if the network, if it required network and the train is uh, coming in and out of network conditions, then. The manga doesn't load and it wasn't popular. So as that got better, as we had offline reading and background downloads and all the rest that uh, the, the country was doing, suddenly digital makes sense. And this is an important lesson for the U.S. because if people are able to read comics or, or you know, have a digital strategy where they're able to actually do things on, a, on whether it's phone or a tablet or whatever it happens to be, then it all it all will work. Um, the, the problem in the U S is so much of the reading experience is based on tablets and newsflash. A lot of people can't afford tablets. People don't have tablets. You know, not everybody's running around with an iPad, but a lot of people are running around with an Android phone or an iPhone. So the comic has to be readable and relevant there, except as a tiny ass screen. And in America, most people are driving around in cars They're not on buses or not on trains. So, you know, you don't have that captive moment where people are able to do things. So, you know, that's the barrier. You have to think about how people are reading stuff. But regardless, um, you know, this, this whole article about manga has turned to digital. It turned to digital because the use case and the, the background, the history, and how people would consume content fit digital. And so that's why Japan was able to move. In the U.S., you know, we don't have that same situation. It's, it's not analogous. And until it is, it's not going to go over. So, you know, you, you just have to think about your strategy. But the, the stupid part is what I just talked about over the last six minutes is more information and more logic 
about how comics and digital and other things work than the big two publishers really, you know, reasonably ever consider. They're too hung up in the wrong items. They, they get, you know, it's like, but if we're going to do digital, then we need to have some collectible element where there's an NFT involved or something like that. Like, no, you just have to make it convenient. You know, lots of people, I'm sure everyone, well, I mean, for sure, everybody listening right now, you're listening on YouTube. Are you listening at home on a laptop, on a TV? Are you listening on your phone? How are you listening to this? You know, if you are on Twitter, the vast majority of people on Twitter are accessing it from their phone. That's how they're using it. So, you know, clearly, you, American, or wherever you are in the world, there's lots of people listening to this show from other places in America, for Christ's sake, but you use the phone and use a tiny screen and it, you you embrace a digital strategy for all kinds of things, social media, YouTube, all kinds of stuff, but not comics. So why? And if the comic publishers aren't asking themselves that question, well, then they don't really have a digital strategy and they're a bunch of idiots. So that's where things go. But um, this article, you know, I, I think is being tossed around incorrectly in a lot of places. And, you know, it just, it, it deserves that content. And that context, rather. Anyway. Well, there you have it. There's a bunch of bullshit about digital. Um, let me know your thoughts. What how, what would get you to read comics on your mobile phone? And don't say nothing. There's something. You do a lot of shit on your mobile phone. You know, what would bring comics to your phone? Think about it. Because the person who cracks that... So, you know, thanks for listening.